Hey guys, my name is Coral. I am a rising senior at Clemson University. I'm also a pre-med student and a biology major with a psychology minor. And I just decided to start this YouTube channel to share my pre-med journey with you guys. And to start off this series, I wanted to make a video about my MCAT journey because I just took it in March. I took it on March 14th, right before all of the exams started getting canceled. And I feel extremely lucky and grateful for that. So I wanted to make a video um, explaining all of my tips and tricks, um, what I did, what I wish I did, and um, what ultimately helped lead me to success on the MCAT. I ended up scoring in the 98th percentile, um, which is a 520, um, and I was really happy to see that score. And um, I attribute a lot of my success to watching these videos when I was looking to start studying and even throughout just to keep myself motivated. and. Um, referencing other social media sites like Reddit. I wanted to give back and really just like reach back out to this community that has helped me so much by letting you guys know what I did and um, what worked for me, what didn't work for me, and what I wish I did looking back so that um, you guys have all the resources in your belt to have success on the MCAT just like I did. So first I want to start off just by going over my score report. So like I said, I took it on March 14th and um, my total score was a 520. Um, on chemistry, the chemistry and physics section, I got a 130, which is the 97th percentile. On the car section, I got a 128, which is the 90th percentile. On the biology and biochemistry section, I got a 131, which is the 99th percentile. And on psych and sociology, I got a 131 as well, which is the 98th percentile. So just to, I just wanted to um, start off by listing my scores and my percentiles so that you guys can decide from there um, what my strengths and weaknesses are. Um, I, you could probably tell that my car section score was a little bit lower than the rest of them. Um, so obviously I wasn't as strong in that area. So take every piece of advice that I have to say with a grain of salt and um, for any of the sections too, different things work for different people and I'm obviously not an expert or a tutor. This is just me giving my advice back to the community that I got so much advice and motivation and inspiration from. So with that being said, I'm going to now get into um, the actual content of the video. And one more thing before I get into the video, I just want to say that I'm going to link all of the resources that I talk about in the description below. Um, including my own notes that I took on Google Docs. I'll create a shareable link to link in the description box below um, so you guys are able to reference and utilize whatever resources that I was able to. So I'm going to start off by talking about all of the resources that I used. When I went into my studying, I really wanted to focus on using free resources and low-cost resources um, because I wanted to show myself and show others that it's not necessary to go out and spend thousands of dollars um, buying an MCAT prep course. And for me personally, it was um, a better idea for me to self-study rather than be held accountable by a teacher because um, in previous standardized tests that I've taken when I was studying and I would have a tutor or a teacher holding me accountable, I felt like I was only doing what the teacher told me to do rather than taking the initiative myself to hold myself accountable to a study schedule and really focusing on my own needs and my own weaknesses um, rather than just a generalized um, box to fit in um, that's often provided by tutoring companies. So the first resource that I used was a series of free diagnostic tests from different test prep companies. So the first one I did was the Kaplan Half Length and then I did the Altius Half Length and then I did the Next Step Full Length One and all of those are free on their website. You just have to sign up for an account um, you don't have to put in your payment information at all and um, you're able to take those exams for free and just get a diagnostic score and I thought those were a really good way to gauge my my abilities at that point and I took those really early on before switching to the actual AMC material and that was actually the only practice material that I paid for and the rest of it were just these free exams which is really cool. So the next resources I used were these. So this is the Kaplan seven book set. And for me, these were, they did the job. Um, I didn't, I actually didn't get through all of them. Um, and I found it kind of difficult to 
focus for that long of time just passively reading them. So what I ended up doing was taking notes in um, Google Docs and made like outlines of the notes and writing down the important things kept me engaged because just simply reading these wasn't gonna help me remember it and um, was really difficult to motivate myself to do. I personally chose the Kaplan books just because I knew a lot of people who were using the Kaplan books. So um, definitely go do your research, see what best fits for you. You could use the Princeton Review, you could use Exam Crackers. Um, I think Next Step has um, some books out there now. So definitely do your research before you choose books. They're all gonna get the job done, it just depends on how detailed they are. I know the Princeton Review is very detailed, whereas Kaplan is still really detailed and you learn more than you need, but um, it's a little bit more broad than the Princeton Review. So yeah, that's all I have to say about this. And unfortunately, when I purchased the seven book set, I caved into the recommendation to buy this and these. And I just want to say I did not use either of these. Um, maybe I looked through these a little bit, but I honestly did not use those very much at all. Um, so I definitely would not recommend buying these. Um, maybe if you have the time to, but I just, I just really don't think that they're that high of yield to be worth at least the time that I had. Next, I want to talk about Khan Academy. So Khan Academy is this website that is doing amazing things to educate people for free. Um, and they have a whole section of MCAT prep on their website. What I mainly used it for was the psychology and sociology videos. Um, rather than looking at the 300 page document that you can find on Reddit, I decided to look at the, to watch the videos myself and to take my own notes on them because that's a more active um, form of learning and engagement with the material than um, just simply reading over a document and maybe condensing, condensing notes from there. And I really wanted to get the information from the source itself um, rather than maybe having some gaps in the information, um, taking it secondhand from what someone else took notes from. But that was just my personal preference. Um, feel free to use the 300 page document. I know there's also a 100 page document, but I would recommend looking at the 300 page one. Um, but what I did is I watched the videos and while I was watching the videos, I made note outlines with all the important information um, for each and every single video. I did a few videos every day and I got through them in about a month. And all of the notes that I took, I have organized into a Google Doc folder and I will link it down below. So check it out if you want. Um, or you can reference the 300 page document or watch the videos yourself like I did. I also know Khan Academy has videos on all of the other subjects, but I, from what I heard, I heard that the psychology and sociology is the holy grail of that subject, whereas you would want to use test prep books um, for the content in all of the other subjects. But they also have really good CARS practice and they have really good practice questions in all areas if you're looking for some extra free practice questions. I didn't personally use the practice questions other than the ones that were ingrained in the psychology and sociology video sections, but I know that they're a really good free resource. So next I want to talk about another free resource, which is Jack Weston's Cars Passages. His website is amazing. He has a ton of different Cars practice passages and questions associated with them, and you can sign up for a passage of the day where he sends you an email with a link to the passage of that day and then you go and do it and it's just a really great way to um, incorporate daily cars practice into your studying and I wish I used this more. I used it a little bit but then I stopped um, doing them every day just because um, if I was doing cars practice I wanted to fully focus on it so it wasn't something that was like super easy for me to just sit down and fully focus on during um, the days I was in school. Um, but I do really wish that I did these every day because consistency is key with practicing for cars and my scores weren't consistent in my practice exams and it ended up being my lowest score on my on the real thing. So it's really important to get consistent cars practice and this is a great way to do it. I also want to mention that I used the Kaplan question of the day that got sent to my inbox every day and I would actually do the questions every day because those were really quick and easy questions to just tap the answer and see if I got it right or wrong and that was a really amazing way to just continue hammering in that information into my head and get some daily practice even on days where I didn't have time to sit down and study. Okay, now I want to talk about this thing. So this, um, I ordered off Amazon and it's a dry erase booklet. 
um, with grid paper in it and it's very similar to the one that you get on test day. So this one is a GMAT practice tablet is what it's called. Like I said, I bought it off Amazon and it was really helpful to practice with. So every time I would take a full length or even when I was doing practice questions and I had to write, I would write it on here. Um, and it was just a great way to get used to writing on something like this because it's a lot different than writing on paper. And it came with these Expo markers. The one you get on test day is a little bit different. But like I said, this is just a great way to practice like test day. I bought these off Amazon and they're just orange earplugs. Any earplugs will do if you already have some great. I would always put these in when I was taking my practice exams because you're gonna want earbuds on test day. They offer you either headphones that cover your ears or earbuds, but I preferred the earbuds so that they didn't push on my temples and hurt my head throughout the exam. Anything you can do to simulate test conditions is gonna be really great and gonna prepare you for test day so you're not nervous or shocked or surprised by anything that's gonna happen. Okay, now I'm gonna talk about the AAMC material. And this is the literal holy grail of material because it is made by the people who make the exam. So this was pretty much the only practice that I did fully um, besides taking a few free full lengths and doing questions of the day that were also free. But this is the only practice that I personally paid for. And um, the practice exams are most similar to the real thing. My score on the real thing was within a couple points of my, all of my practice exams. The section banks are very similar to the way that the actual bio, biochem, and chemistry and physics sections are on the real thing. The flashcards are really good. Some discrete questions is pretty much what the flashcards are. They're not actually flashcards. And then the question packs are also really great because they cover all of the different subjects. I also have the AMC guide. I decided to get the paper version so I could highlight it. And this was pretty good. Um, I wish I had more time to go through this and look at all of the content outlines in here and stuff, but unfortunately I didn't get through all of it, but this is a really great resource to have and you can just opt to get the online version of it. And then lastly, there are lots of free resources, the whole content outlines and everything on the AAMC website. So I would highly recommend looking at that before you start your studying to plan out everything that you wanna do, plan out your schedule, and plan your resources. Um, so that's just a really great free resource as well. And it comes directly from the test makers. Yeah, I just wanna mention a couple other free resources that I found to be really helpful in keeping myself motivated and um, you know, organizing my studying and knowing what I needed to do to succeed um, based on the experiences of others. So first was YouTube videos and that's the reason why I'm making this YouTube video so that I can help others and guide them through what resources um, might be helpful and what will help them um, and let them know like what allowed me to be successful on the exam and what I wish I did differently. Just watching those videos of other people who took the MCAT was extremely helpful and it not only like guided me in what I should be doing but it also um, helped motivate me and keep me positive throughout my studying. And also Reddit was extremely helpful Every time I had a question about maybe one of the questions on the AMC exams, I would Google it and Reddit would immediately come up um, with someone explaining the answer because the AMC explanations for the answers aren't always the best. Um, and then also just looking at people's success stories and um, learning about different resources on there was really great, including the 300 page document, a score converter um, from percent you get correct to a scaled score and everything like that. So now I'm gonna move on to what I did with the time that I studied and um, show you guys my study schedule. In May 2019, which was almost a year before I took the MCAT, I looked over the entire AAMC website and I looked at the content outlines, I read the guide PDF that they have on there, and I just looked at all of the material and all of the resources that they had on there to get myself acclimated to what the exam was like. I also looked into what resources I potentially wanted to use. So that's what I did over the summer um, when I had some free time waiting into the school year. Once I started school from about September to November, I took a few practice exams. Um, I took the Kaplan Diagnostic first, and then I took the Altius half-length diagnostic, and then I took Next Step Full Length 1. Those were just a really great way to gauge where I was starting with the material. Um, 
and a great foundation to build upon and learn from. If you're curious, I'll show you guys my practice test progress in my scores and my number correct in each of the sections that I kept an Excel sheet of, but pretty much in those couple months, my score went from a 501 on the Kaplan one, which I took in September, and then it went to a 512 on Altius, which was a huge jump, and I was really happy about that. And then on next step, I got a 510. So from December 2019 until mid-January 2020, I focused mainly on content review. So what I was doing was going through my Kaplan books and taking notes as I went along. I skipped out on the Behavioral Sciences book and the Cars book because I heard that those ones weren't quite as helpful. So I was mainly focusing on the Biology, Biochemistry, Chemistry, Organic Chemistry, and Physics books. I only got through Chapter 5 in those books which I do regret, and I wish I could have gotten through all of them. And also for content review, this was the period where I went through all of the Khan Academy psychology and sociology videos, and I took my own notes as I went through them, which I found to be extremely helpful, a way to actively engage with the material. And like I said, I will link those notes in the description box below for you guys to reference and compare to the 300 page doc to decide which ones you may want to use. And then lastly, I switched over to doing all AAMC practice in late January and I did that throughout the month of February and up until my test date. And this is by far the most meaningful and most impactful part of my studying. So I would highly recommend doing the AAMC practice last leading up to your exam because not only will it give you a sense of what the actual exam will be like because it's the most similar to the real exam, but it will also give you kind of a gauge of where you're going to score on the real thing. The order I went through the AAMC material was the flashcards and then the question packs and then the section bank and then the official guide questions. And I thought that was a really great order to go in because the section banks are the hardest so those will prepare you the most for the real exam. The order I did the practice exams was two, four, one, and then three. And um, for me, that was a decent order to go in. My score was actually closest to the last one I took, which was the full length three. Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to what I wish I did. And there are a lot of things that I did not know going into studying that I wish I knew and a lot of things that I wish I did, but I ended up not doing. So the first thing is that I really wish that I prioritized studying earlier. I wish I started studying content in September, October, and November before my exam in March um, so that I had time to get through all of the material comfortably and confidently. Like I said, I actually didn't get through all of the Kaplan books that I wanted to. I only got through about chapter 5, which is less than halfway through, and I really regret not taking my studying more seriously earlier. I would definitely say if you're studying throughout the school year, know that you're going to move a lot slower than if you were able to study all day. So I would say that you should definitely start studying about 5 or 6 months before your exam so that you have enough time to get through all the content confidently. The next thing is I didn't have time to get to the AAMC sample test. I decided that this was the test that was the least prioritized in my mind, so I ended up not having time to take it. Um, I wish I did plan out the time to take it, and I definitely would looking back. This test in particular doesn't come with a score, but you can calculate um, an estimate of a score based on score conversions that you can find on Reddit. Next is a practice resource that I really wish I had time to use, and if I started studying earlier, I probably would have had time to use it. Um, and that is UWorld. I've heard that it's really amazing, their explanations are great, and some people even use UWorld as their main content review because their explanations are just so great and they go into the deep concepts behind each question, um, which is a really great way to get the content in in an engaging way. Next, I wish I practiced cars more. Like I said earlier, my car scores were very up and down and I ended up doing the worst on that section on exam day. So I would definitely recommend just hammering in cars practice. Like I said, you could use Jack Weston to do a daily passage per day. My car score was very dependent on how I liked or disliked the passages um, in that particular test. So um, just finding a way to neutrally hammer out car passages um, would be really helpful. And that just comes with practice, honestly. And the last thing I wish I did differently was physics. So. 
I know a lot of people are the same way as I am, but I do not like physics. So when I went to study for physics, I was not motivated to. I just skimmed over the material and I found it painful to try and study physics. So to start off, I would have paid more attention in my physics class when I took it the year before I took the MCAT to gain a deeper understanding of the material and memorize the equation then so that you don't have to go back and memorize them while you're studying for the MCAT. And then from there, I would have, I guess, had more motivation and you know, more drive to force myself to study physics um, and memorize those equations because I just felt like that was such a weak point in my studying. And luckily it didn't hurt me too bad on test day, but I definitely would have focused more on that weakness rather than avoiding it. So that's all I have to share with you guys today. If you guys have any video requests that you would like me to do in the future, maybe I could go into more depth on any of the resources or show you guys how I took notes. Um, I would be happy to do something like that. Just let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to me in the comments section or by email. And I'll put that, put my email in the description box. Um, like I said, all of the links to all of the resources that I used, including my own self-made resources, will be included in the description box below. Good luck with your studying. And remember that this exam does not define who you are. Like I said, I just want to keep hammering that point home. You guys will be successful and you guys are amazing people regardless of your score on this silly exam. Don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you guys later. Bye.